what's up what's up what's up so today the audio may sound um a little differently because i'm actually having to record this on my turtle beach headset um <laughs> luckily i'm a gamer and um love these headphones um and it has a decent quality mic on it um because currently i'm having some uh technical issues with my setup now um i haven't really posted on here and i definitely probably won't be posting on my second channel until like a ways away um you know probably not until i'm in like third fourth month of next year on my second channel so that will become um pretty much empty for the remainder of this year and the beginning months of next year if you're on rumble it's all the same channel um but the pink the pink thumbnail videos will not be showing up on rumble okay but if you're on youtube my second channel will not be posted on um for the remainder of this year and the beginning of next year because currently my laptop's hinges broke which if you didn't know that's what i edit that's what i record with um i record usually i record in filmora with my usb plug-in mic that's how i do this stuff and usually i bring my lap up laptop up to my room to record in pretty much silence and privacy and um then i take my laptop back downstairs where there's actually decent connection and i edit on there so that has kind of been um a real challenge for me making videos now because Basically, like I said, the hinge is broke. Thank God the screen is not broken. I'm really babying the thing. I have to leave it open um, all the time now because um, if I close it, it will break the screen and I will probably never be able to fix it ever again. Um, currently, um, I'm in the process of reconfiguring my desk setup because um i've always wanted a pc um i just didn't want one this fast i wanted to get away with using my laptop for as long as humanly possible but that doesn't seem to be working so um i now have a pc in my possession i had ended up getting a victus um, an HP Victus. I really didn't want HP, but it was the only pre-built PC that I felt comfortable um, customizing myself if I wanted to, and it was the only one within the budget, um, and it was also the only one that fit my room's aesthetic. So, yeah. Um, currently, nothing is set up with that yet because I've still got to get a monitor, I've still got to get a keyboard, and I've also still got to um, get a PC cart for it um, to get it off the ground, um, and I've also got to get the updated SSD that I want for it. Um, I've got a hard drive. That's not the problem. The problem is I want to be able to have enough storage to have a certain amount of games and whatever else on my PC. Um, currently, right now, it's got the lowest um, SSD in there um, that they sold. Um, so that I'll probably end up using that as some sort of external hard drive, probably. Um, but yeah, so things are very messy right now. I've also got. Um, a project that I'm working on that I've been very secretive about because I really don't want to mention too much on that until it's really finished. Um, but you know, this, this, you know, November has been, was a pretty rough month for me with that. Um, 
I do plan on getting my laptop fixed. That's why I'm really babying it. Um, because I love using that for movies. I also love, um, using it to travel and everything like that whenever I do travel. Um, I also like the ability to go upstairs, um, with it and, and, you know, wherever I wanted to go in the house with it. So, um, I do plan on fixing it once I get the money to do so. Um, and, you know, for now I'm, I'm taking things slow with that because it's always frustrating when something happens to my laptop. This time I'm really grateful because, um, in times past, um, you know, a laptop mishaps have gone completely sour and have gotten, um, there's been times that have been really so frustrating with laptops for me. So I'm just lucky that it's not that bad and I'm still able to edit on it. So, so basically if you're wondering, like I said, I'm recording this on my phone with an app. Okay. And I'm going to go when I'm ready, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to edit on that slightly busted laptop. Thank God it's not too bad. And that's how I'm going to be doing things from now on. So the mic quality is not going to be as good as it is, um, until, um, as it usually is until I get my PC all set up and that's going to take a long time. It's going to take a really long time. So I'm not rushing anything. Um, I'm kind of slow going with this. Um, what is exciting about this is this will give me the opportunity for my reorganizing my desk, which wish me luck on that because my desk is a mess as it is. And I have a lot of art supplies on it as it is. I have no idea how I'm going to fit a monitor on there. Um, but it's also going to give me an opportunity to try and reconfigure my desk to be able to fit my Cintiq on it, which is pretty exciting because I have a feeling if I have a whole Cintiq desk set up, I will be more motivated to use it because, because, um, if it's on my desk, it will not get as warm on my lot. Now here's the thing, guys, whenever I use my Cintiq, I literally have to use that thing on my lap, um, with my laptop. And that's not fun because that thing heats up like crazy and it's probably not good for my body, but that's all right because I don't feel like having kids. I don't feel like ever wanting kids ever. Um, so I'm not too worried about what that would do to my reproductive organs or even my body itself. It's just the annoyance of it getting extremely hot. Like it feels like a sauna every time I use it. So if I'm able to reconfigure my desk for a monitor, I'm going to feel motivated to try and fit my Cintiq on there as well, which in a way will act as a dual monitor because it's not like, um, it, it's got a screen. So, um, that's also kind of cool. And, and that'll be interesting because that, if I'm able to figure out how to set that up as a, another monitor, that would be really insanely cool because then at the same time that I'm working on a project, I could watch a movie or watch a show or watch um, YouTube videos or whatever. Whereas in the past, I've always had to listen to stuff um, because when you have, okay, so when you have the Cintiq set up with the laptop, I never thought to even go into my settings and see to figure out if I could set it up as a dual monitor because I just didn't see the point. But, um, with the laptop, basically it's projecting the Cintiq basically is, is projecting whenever I use it with my laptop is projecting the exact same image and audio that, um, or just image, I should say, because audio comes from the laptop itself, but it projects the exact same, um, the exact same image as what is on the laptop. Now, if I try and figure out how to set it up as a dual monitor with my PC, 
I could project my art app onto the Cintiq and then leave all the other windows up, possibly on the monitor, which would be extremely cool. Um, like, extremely cool, because then I could really multitask, multitask. Um, that would just be amazing if I could do that. So I'm really hoping to do that. Um, my desk, you know what, guys, this is just so funny to me. One of the other reasons why I dreaded getting a PC was because of my desk. Now, I don't show my room off a whole lot. I don't really show everything I have a whole lot because I really don't feel comfortable doing that yet. Um, or really at all. Um, but my desk, just to let you guys know, it's it's really hilarious. My desk is huge. It was the largest, and I made sure of that when I asked for it. Um, I made sure it was the biggest desk I could find with the most storage I could find. This is the, um, I don't know the make and model of it. I don't know, but I do remember looking specifically for this desk. I know that a lot of people, um, that are arts and crafts sort of people have this exact desk. And so they know exactly what I mean by this. This is a huge desk. Okay. Um, it's got multiple storage compartments, um, built in. And the funny thing is, is, um, it's still not enough. It is still not enough. Um, and I'm almost wondering, and here's what I'm wondering, guys. I'm really wondering if I'm going to have to maybe move this thing and turn it sideways or uh, because there's just no possible way that everything on my desk is going to fit in my desk or anywhere in my room. And so I'm really just contemplating like if it would be worth totally turning this desk around somehow, because here's the thing guys is, and I don't even know if that's possible. Because the deal is, the the way that my de my room is set up now, every single wall is covered with a piece of furniture or something. They're getting the desk where it is now was difficult enough at the time, and um, it was difficult enough at the time, um, and. As it is, there's certain storage compartments that I can barely access because of the lack of space in between pieces of furniture. I'm really going to have to consider flipping things, trying to switch things around, which is going to be very difficult to do. Um, I'm really kind of dreading this project. That's why I'm going to take it slow. Um, because <laughs> there's just so much to deal with when it comes to this desk, y'all, like, there's just no, I really don't have, I'm really stuck on what I'm gonna do about this, because this is kind of gonna be a disaster, I'm not gonna lie, um, and I don't really feel like parting ways with a lot of the stuff that's on my desk, so, um, there's gonna be, there's gonna be some mishaps here, and, and it's gonna be a long project, so please wish me luck with this, um, Oh my gosh, this is going to be the mess. But thank God, you know, um, I had the ability to um, get this and, and get everything that was needed. But I really did not feel like doing this this year. You know, it's like every other, anybody that knows me in real life, these laptops, I'm telling you, are not made correctly. Um, I thought this one was going to last a long time, that it was going to be extremely sturdy because it was in a metal case, which it really is. It really is sturdy and um, really was. I'm not sure how the hinges broke. I'm literally not even sure how. Um, but here's the deal, guys. I noticed it. It's a good thing I noticed it when I did. And um, I'm really hoping to get the money Um to fix it, because I really want to fix it, um, I don't want to buy another laptop in my life, I'm serious, <laughs> I really don't, um, so, yeah, just, 
there's a lot going on right now. A lot going on right now. Um, I do plan on recording a TBR cart video for you guys, so that should be coming soon, maybe. Um, I'm not sure which one I have to post first, which one I should post first. I think there may be a haul video, maybe, that I have to post first or something. Um, you know, yeah, there might be that. Um, and then, then I'll probably upload the, um, TBR cart. But, um, if you don't see me posting as much on these YouTubes, just know I have not quit. I've not given up. Uh, it's just, um, a struggle. It's a struggle. So, I'm gonna get into, finally, now, um, what you're really here for, which is... <laughs> Um, the November 2022 reading wrap-up, um, I have great news for you guys. As of my recording this, I've officially completed, and then some, the Goodreads Challenge. I had set the goal for 40 books this year. I read 44 so far out of the 40, um, and my challenge is, according to Goodreads, 110% complete. Um, which is amazing. So I've, I've totally exceeded the goal and, um, I'm continuing to exceed the goal because there's a series I'm listening to right now that is absolutely addictive. And I'm going to be discussing that in this, um, wrap up here. So let's just jump right into it. The first book I read in the month of November was called The Mystery by Lacey Sturm. Now, the month before November, um, which would be October, I'd read The Reason, which you guys heard me talk about that, and what that book was about, and um, this book was of a very similar flavor. Um, it was basically about her um, journey with God um, through trying to find um, her husband, her significant other, um, and it was a it was basically a story about um love and um how basically god played a role and um finding a partner and it was it was a really interesting um read um i gave it a four stars i'm not sure what i'd given the reason um but i thought the story of how she found her husband was really sweet um i thought just, it was interesting listening to, um, her life's story, um, and, you know, how she perceived, um, men to be, and how that influenced her thoughts on, you know, love and stuff like that, um, and in a lot of ways, like, I really do, I love her, um, writing as, um, probably in a lot of ways, um, the same, that I do her singing because, um, the messages in these books, um, that she's written so far, um, are really important for people to hear and relate to. And, um, personally for myself, I feel like these books have given me new perspective on a lot of things. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like she hits on a lot of like important subjects and she covers them well, um, in relation to, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and everything like that, I think she really does a good job, um, illustrating, um, you know, just problems that people have and, um, problems that, or, or things that she's went through in her life, life experiences and stuff like that. Um, I really do, I really did enjoy this book. I think I enjoyed it. Um, I'm actually going to say I enjoyed it more than the reason. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what I had given the reason, but, um, in terms of a star rating, but I really did enjoy this one better. Um, just because it, it really, I guess in the time period that I'm in, it's kind of relatable. Um, kind of really relatable. And, um, I don't know. It was just interesting hearing the whole story. I just found this book to be more, um, helpful, I guess. <laughs> helpful, um, interesting. I don't know. I, I, I loved her book about, um, her testimony, but, um, 
this this kind of you know had a, a stronger impact on me I guess from the story so um I gave it a four stars it was really good the second book I read in the month of November was called Technocracy the Hard World Road to World Order now as you know this year I've read if you followed these wrap ups I've read a lot of nonfiction political nonfiction. I really don't like to get political on this channel, um, but it kind of overlaps here because I like to read about things that I'm interested in and, and things, you know, rather than things I'm not interested in. Um, but I will say this was a total five star read for me. It was by Patrick M. Wood. Um, really accurate, really on the money. This book was written, I believe, four years ago in 2018. It was published. I am so amazed by just how accurate this book was, how it was so well thought out, how it was so well written. Um, and for a beginner's guide on, if, if somebody asked me what is technocracy, um, and I couldn't explain it to them in a definition, uh, and, and I felt like they needed more than just a definition, I would send them to this book immediately. Um, like I said, this book was extremely accurate on, um, what it is, what they plan on doing, um just extremely accurate. It was, um, I, I just loved this book, guys. Loved this book. Um, it was totally, um, a, a great read. Um, I would recommend this to every one of my truther friends. Guys, you are going to love this book. I'm sure many of you probably have read this already, but if you have not, um, it, it, you really ought to listen to it because it is just, or read it physically because get your hands on it somehow, because it was so, it was so well put together and just the timeline of things and each subject matter, it hit on basically every major subject. So I 100% approve of this book. I would 100% recommend you reading this book. And um, it was a five-star read for me. The third and last book I read this month really, it, um, <laughs> really got me hooked. Now this is for, um, this is, this is a fiction book. Um, unlike the other two I read this month, the month of November. This book was actually a bonus borrow on Hoopla for the month of November. And, um, I noticed that with the bonus borrows, like a lot of the times the bonus borrows are for books that are in series, just so the author can get you hooked on reading all of the other ones. It's a good strategy. Um, and it was, and I'm glad that, um, this author had done that because, this series is so addictive, um, and also it is, not only is the series addictive, but I think this series is a really good, um, exercise for the mind, it's a really good, um, it's a really good series to get your mind going. Now, let me just, um, tell you the title and then let me tell you, um, what this could be perceived as similar to and, and just a little bit more about this book before I really get into, um, my feelings on it. So this book was called Edge of Collapse by Kyla Stone. I gave this particular, um, book out of the series a four star. This series is about an EMP happening on Christmas Eve, okay? Now, there's many preppers out there that have recommended books about EMPs. 
because, like I said, they're really good exercise um, on, they really get your mind going and they really um, force you to think about what the what ifs, okay? And there are, there's another series out there, I think, that's called like Second After or One Second After or something, okay? I know there's another series out there about an EMP, I've never read it before. I really want to read it after reading this. Um, the series that I'm talking about right now that's written by Kyla Stone is an extensive series. I think it's got like probably like maybe six, seven, eight books in the series. It's long, but when you're listening to it on audiobook, it's not as long. Okay. Um, this book series, um, yeah, so it's about an EMP, um, this is very important, um, in my opinion, to read fictional books that have some shred of reality in them, and try and relate them to the real world, and see how it fits, um, I think it's important for people that are of a sound mind and have an idea of what's going on in the world to really try and prepare for the worst um, physically, but also mentally as well. That's why books like this are a very good exercise for the brain in trying to understand the psychology of it and trying to understand the reasoning behind it and all of that. It's a really good, um, it's a really good, uh, practice, um, in the brain for if something like this happened, if shit hit the fan, what would you do? What would you not do? How would people around you act? What would happen? How would it happen? Um, and all of that. I really enjoy that part specifically about books like this, books about a, um, you know, some sort of outbreak, books about a zombie apocalypse, books about, um, you know, robots, AI, books about, um, you know, government overreach and tyranny and stuff like that. It's very important to read fiction that ha- is rooted in some sort of reality, okay? Margaret Atwood is famous for saying this about The Handmaid's Tale. She never pulled or put anything into that book that was not based in some sort of reality. I would venture the same thing goes for Aldous Huxley and George Orwell. They they wrote their stories based on, it it was fictional books, based on pulling aspects in from real life, okay? They brought in aspects, they brought in subject matter from real life. That's what this book series is. It's a whole book series dedicated to uh, EMP happens before Christmas Day, What does America do? What happens to America, small-town America? What happens to Americans? What occurs after? Do people survive? Do they start, you know, going at each other's throats? What happens? Now, I will say this first book was a really... um, It's a very interesting beginning to a story, specifically a story about this EMP. And... The author made it a point to challenge herself by writing a story um, based on the idea of would um, an EMP hitting be a good thing for someone out there? Now, this book, um, it's not really a spoiler because this is just a plot line. This book is about a, um, woman, I think her name is Hannah, um, and it's about a woman, and it's about, um, her basically getting kidnapped years ago, 
um, and basically tortured and all types of stuff, um, by this crazy guy, um, and the lights go out, and her captor, um, is basically, um, out of town, so the, you know, the automatic locks or whatever, the, all the, all the stuff, like, all the techie, you know, technology that kept her trapped and locked up, um, was fried, and she was able to get out and escape, okay, so that's the plot line that starts off the series, now, currently, I've read three more of books from the series since then, I will say, like I said, this, the series has got me totally hooked, um, and like I said, it's a really good exercise, and it's really good, I, I really think she did a great job, um, expressing, and, and really, um, not just expressing, what's the correct word for this? This author had done an amazing job with, um, really showcasing how fast things would decline and degrade if something like this were to happen, and specifically around a holiday period. That's why I always tell people, I'm always telling people, don't ever leave your guard down during these winter months, during any holiday season, really, because that's when you can expect um, people to not be paying attention and they're not on guard at all. And that's when you really need to be paying attention. But um, I think she does a really amazing and accurate job of portraying how 99% of America would react to this. You're going to have two very distinct groups, and then you're going to have people in the middle caught up in this and, and are fence-sitters, and eventually you're forced to pick a side, okay? There's going to be the takers, okay? And then there's going to be, you know, um, there's going to be militant uh, groups. There's going to be... Um, tyrannical groups that form and rise, kind of very similar to, um, Walking Dead in that way, that's what this book series kind of reminds me of, is, like, the dynamics, you know, what would the dynamics look like, you know, how would people change, what, you know, would it, would they allow the situation to change them, you know, they would change, they would have to change, so, um, how do they change, um, do they change for the better, do they change for the worse as people, um, the, the book goes into detail and it, and it talks about the groups that would rise up to take power and take total advantage of the average everyday American. Then you would have the average everyday American that never prepared, never did anything, and they become, um, tyrants and militant like, um, and, and you're going to have the people that didn't prepare and feel entitled to things. And I think in all of her books, she really does a good job describing how I envision a, a, a total collapse of society to look like. Because you're going to have so many people that were so unprepared, so, um, and they're going to try and take advantage. They're going to try and, um, become better in a lot of these cases, better than what they were in the past world. Um, you know, when, when things were normal and they think it's their opportunity to become Kings and Queens. Um, and then you're going to have people that are barely scraping by to survive. And then you're going to have people with all the skills and all the materials and all the resources. And they're not hoarders. They're just intelligent, smart people that are going to try and help other people. Um, but really it boils down to you're going to have the average person in the apocalypse and then you're going to have the total warlords like Negan is, okay? Um, 
Or another really good example of this is on the show Revolution, which, by the way, um, is one of my most favorite shows ever. Um, and I really ought to do just a whole video on the show itself, um, either on here or on my other channel or whatever. I really ought to do a whole video on that alone because it's, it's literally one of my favorite shows of all time. But in that show, um, you have a similar thing going. It's like, um, uh, you know, Tom Neville in the show, I, I totally love, um, Giancarlo Esposito, um, he plays, you know, this insurance guy, he'd gotten fired, you know, the night of, of the EMP hitting, or the, the, the outage occurring, thrown into total darkness, and he was like a pushover, you know, he was like, a, um, he was a peon in the show, and he was everybody's doormat. And in the apocalypse, in the in the beginning of the apocalypse, he's like still that beta, that beta male, um, you know, can barely provide for his family, and you know, is barely able to provide. Um, and and he learns how to be ruthless because, you know, things were ruthless before, but they were they're even ten times more ruthless in a total grid down apocalypse. And, you know, he had a family to feed. And so he learns to become just as brutal um, as, as the guys that were basically taking advantage of him and his family for so many years. And um, he learns to become a villain um, in order to maintain um, and, and keep his family alive. In this book series, there's a lot of that going on. I'm not going to get into all the other books that I've read so far separately because those will be coming in the next wrap up, um, which will be the last wrap up for the year. And then we're going to do the top. Um, we might do top 10 for books this year because of how many I read. So we might end up doing top 10 books and then like top 20, um, 20 movies is what I'm thinking. Um, but this book specifically that I'm talking about edge of collapse was a really good challenge. She challenged herself into writing. It could a grid down be a good thing. Could an EMP be a good thing? And it was for this particular character that she had created called Hannah. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into all the details of um, what happens during the book, other than that was the plot line. And I really recommend you guys reading this. It's a very good, like I said, it's a very good exercise. It, it makes you think, well, what would I do? What what would I do in this situation, in that situation, you know, this whole series? Um, I gave it a four star because, to be very honest with you, I'm not too big of a fan of this particular character in the, in the book um, series. She's actually my least favorite character. It's so funny. The first book that starts off this whole series, I honestly just pushed through so I could get to the other books, um, about her family and the town where she came from originally. I'm not too big of a fan of her character at all. And I'm not too big of a fan of, um, the other characters surrounding her at all either. Um, they're just kind of really generic to me, I guess would be the word. Um, I feel like the characters in the town she came from are more developed and I just love small town drama anyway. So maybe that's why <laughs> I have like a, um, like soft spot for the other characters. Um, but I'm not too big of a fan of any of the characters in this book specifically, um, that starts off the series, but I'm telling you, push through this book anyway. And by the way, I had kind of messed up because I didn't know there was a prequel. There's a prequel, um, called the chaos rising. Um, but it, to me, it really doesn't matter which way you read it. Um, though, because it's, it's a 0.5 book. And after reading, um, edge of collapse, I didn't really feel like I was missing out too much. Like, I was, I would recommend to read it in order, I always do, but I'm just saying, 
I didn't end up reading it in order properly either, and I don't really feel like I missed a whole lot. I feel like it just filled in whatever gaps, which there weren't that many to the story. Um, and, and the story does make a lot more sense when you do read the prequel. So I say read the prequel. Um, I don't really care what order you read it in. I'm just saying it's, it's kind of necessary to the rest of the books to read that one. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what's been going on here. Um, that's what it's like for me now. Um, having to record on this phone instead. Um, I totally enjoyed, uh, the reading for this month. Um, what I read this month, if I had to choose, obviously I'd choose, um, uh, you know, if I had to pick one book that was my favorite out of this whole month, it definitely was that, um, technocracy book, which is why I gave it a five stars. Um, guys, I would totally recommend reading that for sure. And then this whole EMP series, it's a very good test run exercise um, to really think about the what ifs, and um, which is something that I do all the time. <laughs> it's probably not too good for me, but I think about the what ifs all the time, and I think the author did a really good job. I, I think she did a phenomenal job. Um, describing what it would really be like and how ruthless and, and it would be. One fun fact about this, which I learned after reading a few of the books, is that there's actually a game um, out there um, kind of relating to this story. Um, I don't think it has... There's no plans for it to be a movie or show yet, but there is a game for it. Um, it, from what I, the videos I saw, it's not a very popular game. It's not one that was really totally developed well, but, um, it's out there. So if you want to check that out instead of, you know, reading the book, it's kind of based on the book. The first book and the first book alone is what it looks like. Um, it, it kind of looks like one of those escape room type games. I'm not really sure, but... Um, from, from what I've seen, it's not super great quality, um, but it's out there if you want to check it out. I don't even know where you can get the damn thing. I just know it's out there, <laughs> which is kind of, I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, I haven't seen that many books that like have games for them. You know what I mean? Like it, it, that's kind of a cool concept and that's kind of a cool way to promote your book. Um, because I think there's a lot of books that that would maybe work with, you know what I mean? Like, it would be cool if there was, like, a Hunger Games game. It'd be cool if there was, like, a Divergent game. Like, it'd be cool if there was a, you know, whatever game, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of a cool, um, idea for the future. Like, I mean, there's, but, um, there are some books that are, like, you know, that have video games and stuff like that. There, there are the Witcher books, you know, there's, you know, I'm sure there's probably other games out there that are, are similar, but um, I think it's a cool idea to have games for the books. Like, that's kind of a cool way to promote your book. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you're definitely going to want to tune in. Um <sighs> the beginning of the new year for the, um, top 10 books and probably end up being tw top 20, um, movies. Uh, of course I always give, um, at the end I always give, uh, you know, honorable mentions as well, but you're definitely going to definitely this year, guys, you're going to want to tune into that. I'm going to be giving a lot of recommendations, uh, top notch, top notch stuff that I've read and watched this year. And so, yeah, that's all for today. Um, I'm going to see if I can record that, uh, TBR cart video at some point and upload that. And that's all for tonight, guys. All right.
Till next time. Bye, guys.